What up watch lovers and others? My name is Andreas Golle, also known as Wrist Viper on social media. And today we're reminiscing about a turtle, more specifically the Slim Turtle. It's been a year since I purchased the SPB317 and I have quite a few thoughts on my mind so let's talk about the watch and again let me bless you guys with the answers to THE question. Is it garbage? Now let's turn back the clock a bit. Back to July of 2022 when the SPB317 was first released. Man was I excited. All the blood in my body rushed to my wrist, cause who doesn't get excited about a new Prospect reinterpretation, huh? The look of the watch was what immediately drew me in. Well, it's a black diver, like the world hasn't seen that before, right? But the dimensions were what really got me. Known as the slimmest turtle of the bunch, the watch comes in at 41mm in diameter, 123 thick, it has a lock to lock of 46.9 mm and a lock width of 20 mm. Needless to say, I was optimistic right from the start. Everyone knows that I love smaller watches. Now, 41 mm might not seem small to you, but we all understand a turtle rarely wears true to size, and considering the short lock to lock, I knew I was in for a treat. It is also worth mentioning that I do have a soft spot for reinterpretations. This one being of the 6105-8000 from the late 60s being Seiko's successor to their very first dive watch known as the 62MAS. So after chewing on it for a couple of months, I pulled the trigger back in September of 2022. The watch retails for 1100 euros out the store, but I found it brand new on Chrono24 for 800 euros. The weight. You guys know how the weight goes. It is the most exciting form of torture out there. I hope you're busy or have something to do cause patience is just not gonna cut it for you. Though I would actually argue that we should learn to appreciate the weight cause it is often the most exciting part of getting a new watch. Next to actually getting the watch, of course. The days are so hopeful and exciting when you're waiting for a special delivery, you feel me? So when it finally arrived, I was thrilled. And the first thing I did, I changed the strap. Why? Because it's a disappointment as per usual. Okay, it's not horrible. I just don't like it. It's too thick and stiff. That's what she never said. I went from rubber to NATO to Uncle Seiko and God bless our favorite uncle, really. I opt for the classic C199 and wow, did it just tool up this already beautiful tool watch. Hell yeah, a massive recommendation for me, always. But besides the strap, I was in love. It's funny how our taste can change with time. Back when I first started collecting, I never understood what people saw in the turtle design. But today, I can't imagine my collection without one. It is one of the most iconic builds in the watch industry, ever, period. The cushion case is so rugged and handsome, created with the purpose of a tool. A 200 meter ISO certified diver, yes sir. Stainless steel and anti-reflective sapphire straight to the face. It's just a black diver, yes. And what's not to like about it? I love the red tip on the second hand for a small pop of color. The contrast between the brushed and polished hands. The applied hour markers filled with Seiko's powerful Lumibrite. The drill locks for that extra vintage vibe. The sharp 120 click coin edge 60 minute countdown bezel and the screw down crown at 4 o'clock just never fails me. And contrary to popular opinion, I think the date window is so neatly placed and well hidden between 4 or 5. It is just overall a timeless beast. So you might have guessed it at this point. Yes, she is my type. But how has the last year been? Well, I'll start by stating that this is probably my most worn watch out of my collection. No wonder why, look at how it wears. 17 and a half centimeter wrist, FYI. I've been enjoying it, a lot. I've worn it at home, out and about, hiking and swimming. Yet, I don't see much wear and tear on the mainly brushed case. The bracelet does carry some of the classic hairlines though. But I certainly haven't babied it. I think it's been holding up very well. Though I do feel that this is one of those pieces that's just gonna look great scratched up too. So I assume it's gonna age very well. Time to talk organs. 
Under the dial, you'll find the in-house caliber 6R35. 24 joules, 70 hour power reserved, 21,600 beats per hour and a date complication. How's it been performing? Seiko promises minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day, but I do know it's a real hit or miss with this caliber. Now I own and have owned a lot of watches sporting the 6R35, but this has by far been the most accurate of the bunch. It's only been running a few seconds fast today, but I guess I've just been lucky. I've always liked a 70 hour power reserve. It is just one of those features that comes in handy and convenient. So honestly, no complaints from me. What is your experience with the 6R35? So is there anything negative to say about this piece besides the strap? Not really to be honest, but I guess it's my personal bias and preferences speaking here. Well, perhaps I could do without the Prospect logo on the dial, but I don't mind it. Now for the price, 1100 euros might be a bit up there, but if you can find it for a good price secondhand, I think it's gonna be hard to beat. It does it all and it does it all very well. It's a treat for your eyes and very capable yet slim and understated. I think every collector needs at least one black diver in their collection. For some, it might be an SKX or perhaps a sub, but for me, this is it. So fam, there you have it. It's been a great year. I love this piece. It's a massive recommendation from my side, especially if you decide to upgrade the strap. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the SPB317 and what black diver is just the one for you. It is always a pleasure chatting with you. I would be eternally grateful if you would like this video and please go ahead and subscribe. I would love to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to let the wrist vibe. Peace.